Vegeta wants Bulma 20 years earlier. So the beginning of this Dragon Ball fan manga takes place during the Namek Saga when Vegeta is facing off against the Ginyu Force and is losing. He has been beaten completely by Raccoon and has lost this battle. So this is where the actual arc starts off and we have Bulma coming in clutch with a rope. She lassos Vegeta and grabs Gohan and Chris on her motorbike she is trying or attempting to save Vegeta from utter destruction. As you guys can see here on this beautifully colored and extremely detailed panel, this is the original image that I saw that made me fall in love with Vegeta and Bulma in this Dragon Ball fan manga, mainly because Bulma, as you can see, she's far more proactive in this story than she is in the anime, and she already sort of seems to want to save Vegeta and has maybe a sort of crush on him, so that is the reason she attempts to save save him from the Ginyu Force before he is killed and I just gotta say I love the bike in this. The added bike and the gadgets that Bulma kind of employs in this shows that she came prepared to Planet Namek, something we really didn't get a handle on in the anime. She didn't really come with any weapons or any modes of transportation which I feel like Bulma would honestly have. Bulma looks back at Vegeta and Vegeta stares at her surprised that it is Bulma who is attempting to save him, a earthling from the backwater planet that he just tried to destroy. But this locking of the eyes is cut short as he realizes as well as everybody else that Birder is standing right in front of them. He has caught up to them, no surprise there, I mean they're only on a speeder bike and he is you know the fastest being alive and he comes in for a punch and it looks like he is aiming straight for Bulma and if Birder actually punches Bulma I would guarantee the reality of the situation would be that Bulma's head would go flying into a pond somewhere. But luckily, it seems it is Goku time and he gets there right in the nick of time, stops Birder with one finger, and then drop kicks him in the face, breaking his scouter, surprising everyone, and it looks like Bulma and Krillin, Gohan, and Vegeta were all thrown off the bike in the ensuing calamity. Goku has saved the day and he's apologizing for his rough landing. I mean, he did destroy the bike and Bulma's just lucky to be alive. Krillin fills him in on exactly what's going on, similar to the anime where they're telling him exactly what happened. And Goku looks over at a really damaged Vegeta who is now untied from Bulma, but you can see that Bulma is actually worried about him. Goku offers Bulma a sensu bean for Vegeta, seeing as how he was trying to help everyone. And he actually kind of was in his own Vegeta way. Obviously, he was facing off against the Ginyu Force. But Goku is going to take care of Raccoon, which actually pisses Raccoon off, similar to the anime. And as Raccoon charges in anger, Goku makes swift work, kicking him right in the gut to everyone's shock. And Raccoon is down for the count with his ass cheeks up in the air to Bulma's utter disgust. So this is almost the exact same thing that happened in the anime and the manga because now all that's left, at least in this little squad, is Jace. And Jace flies off to probably warn Frieza, get more reinforcements, get someone to come and help him. Goku gives everyone sensu beans to get him back to 100% and Bulma gives Vegeta his and Vegeta does not want it. He kind of pulls his face away but Bulma screams at him and sticks the sensu bean right in his mouth leading to a strangely kinky moment between Vegeta and Bulma and they both kind of feel this sort of weird tension through this entire manga and they just don't want anything to do with it at this point, so Bulma pulls away and Vegeta realizes that he's back to 100%. Now this is another part of the story that is brand new to this manga and Krillin asks why there are two 4 star Dragon Balls and Vegeta asks the exact same thing, only for Bulma to go into a tremendous explanation that she has a chemist friend and they looked at the compounds that make the Dragon Balls but you know, 
they don't got time for that kind of explanation. So Bulma essentially says that she made a fake one with her friend's help while she was bored waiting for everybody to return. But because Gohan, Krillin, and Vegeta stopped by for like a second, grabbed the Dragon Ball and ran off, Bulma couldn't tell them that there was also a fake, so she used the Dragon Radar to come and basically save their butts from getting killed by a raccoon. Vegeta, quick to anger, blast all the combatants that are knocked out, and yells at Goku, why don't you take care of the enemy like you're supposed to? And Goku yells at him that they couldn't even barely move. And that is basically Raccoon, Birder, and I believe Guldo, but he might be dead by this point. So Vegeta basically slaughtered these guys when they're knocked out. And Vegeta has a point because he says that his softness is going to get him killed. And I mean, it does get him in trouble, but Jace is going to come back with Frieza and Captain Ginyu and they're just going to take the Dragon Ball. Goku can't do anything against all that firepower. Bulma has an answer for everything and says why don't we just hide with the Dragon Ball, find the rest of them and make our wish. And that's when Goku realizes that there is a powerful aura over the horizon and Gohan yells at them that it's in the direction of the elders and if Frieza goes there and the Dragon Balls don't work because one of them is fake, he's going to kill the elders which makes all the Dragon Balls disappear which everybody kind of realizes like they're in dire straits here. But before they have time to formulate a plan, Jace returns with Captain Ginyu and they all start heading away from the battle area. Bulma gives the Dragon Radar and the Dragon Ball to Krillin to leave and Goku says that he's going to take her back to the ship and that's not going to be something that is going to fly with Jace and Ginyu because they're here to destroy this rebel scum but Ginyu realizes he's going to take the small fries later and destroy the big fish now. So the standoff is set between between Goku and Captain Ginyu as Bulma and Vegeta look on. But Vegeta was never really on their side and he realizes that their advantage to all this is the woman, she's the one that came in to help, she's the one that has the capsule, she's the one that is the scientist, she's got the dragon radar, she is far more valuable to him than anyone else. So he quickly moves to grab Bulma and he flies off with her because he does not want to get entangled with Ginyu as Ginyu begins his attack on Goku. But Vegeta realizes now that Bulma is a little bit too much to handle in this. I mean like far more than she was in the manga and she pulls out a gun and points it at Vegeta, kicking him in the face and yelling at him that he better take her to a place where she can shower, change clothes, use the bathroom. And as she struggles against Vegeta, Vegeta tells her, all right, all right, I promise just stop moving because she is becoming relentless. Vegeta is flying off in the distance, holding Bulma, who is seemingly just talking trash and nagging him the entire time. And you can just see the pain and suffering on his his face right here and Bulma says that this is the dumbest thing that he's done besides coming to earth because if his whole plan is to steal the dragon balls to make his own wish well Goku is going to beat him to it and beat the crap out of him and the trash talk continues as she says and threatens him that if he brings her into one of his little pods where he's in she's just going to scream the entire time in that little pod until his ears bleed and Vegeta I don't think can take much more of this he's just kind of like trying to tune her out but she's just continuously talking shit honestly Bulma continuously talking shit to Vegeta who won't destroy her is just giving me life right now especially this murderous Vegeta that we have right in front of us but it all turns around when Bulma realizes that there is something off in the distance and that is Frieza's ship she's staring at it and she gets excited even Vegeta notices that her excitement comes from the fact that she in her heart is a scientist she's an adventurer she loves new technology so she wants to go inside the ship and she's pulling Vegeta closer let's go inside let's go inside and Vegeta at this point I think that he's feeling a little too close to Bulma but at the same time there's something murderous about his stare right here and that is when he sees one of Frieza's men just lounging around and he blasts him into smithereens. 
Bulma begins to reprimand him, but he has a point. What were you thinking? We were going to get a welcome party? Come on. Yeah, I mean, bulma has got to realize this is the enemy right here, and he had to kill this guy or else he's going to warn everybody else. But if that was his plan, well, he kind of fucked up right here because he kind of just drops right in the middle of all of Frieza's soldiers. And I honestly think this is part of my favorite panel right here. This one where Vegeta is just looking around him, surrounded, looking smug because he knows these guys can't kill him. And Bulma looking a little bit worried, but also kind of bringing herself a little bit closer to Vegeta because, you know, she is also in danger. And somebody shoots, but she shoots him before the blast can hit Vegeta and giving him the stink eye of destruction. And Vegeta notices that she is warm hearted similar to Goku because instead of shooting him in the face she kind of just shoots his hand and gets it out of commission and Vegeta slowly lets go of Bulma and you can see right here that he's seems to be copping a feel he declares that this is war to Bulma's shock as the rest of the soldiers unload on him but unfortunately they are firing volleys at the prince of all Saiyans. And Bulma continues to be soft hearted as she shoots at their weapons to Vegeta yelling at her, what are you doing? They're trying to kill you. Stop trying to incapacitate them. And then Vegeta shoots a volley, killing three of them instantly. Bulma eyes the carnage and looks to see one survivor pointing his weapon right at Vegeta. And Bulma almost crying screams to him, tell him where are the Dragon Balls and the guy does not listen and he fires right at Bulma. Now, Bulma is an earthling, so the blast from these things would absolutely kill her and would rip right through her like a hot knife through butter. But fortunately for her, Vegeta saves her life, taking the shot and firing one back, killing this guy instantly. Bulma continues to yell at him and try to lecture him because she does bring a fair point. He could have really told them more about the Dragon Balls, but that probably would have required uh, a lot of torture and a lot of time, which, you know, Vegeta might not have right now with Frieza lurking about. These are Frieza's men, and they are not just going to give up the Dragon Balls easily. With pain in his voice, he yells that these men will kill you, and your kindness that you learned on planet Earth can bring your destruction, because these men fear Frieza more than death itself. And Vegeta gives her a little monologue, saying that the powerful will rule over the galaxy, it's kill or be killed, that's essentially how his life has always been. But Bulma really does believe that if Vegeta didn't come here with the intent to start killing them all, which he essentially basically did, he started firing them as soon as he entered the airspace around Frieza's ship, then they wouldn't have attacked him. They would have had a meaningful conversation with him about why they would not give up the Dragon Balls, which you guys know that wouldn't have worked, especially with Frieza's men. But Bulma worries that if he continues down this course of just attacking everything, then he will be killed. And this absolutely absolutely touches Vegeta's weak spot. What weak spot am I talking about? Well, in the monologue that he had with Goku right before he died when Frieza had shot him with that fatal blow, he started talking about how Frieza ruled the planet, used him as a slave. He wasn't even a human or a sentient being to Frieza. Frieza just thought of them as monkeys. So there's a lot of pain there and Vegeta has had a really, really tough life and Vegeta even tells her this by grabbing onto Bulma and saying that planet Earth was essentially a paradise and she's completely clueless as to what real life is and what the struggles of the universe are actually actually like because Vegeta went through them and Bulma had her adventures but she doesn't know pain and suffering like Vegeta has and as he gets his face closer to hers he realizes that there is something drawing him to Bulma and he gets closer and it looks like he is about to kiss her but he pulls back and says I'll take you to the restroom and Bulma and him walk down the hallway as Bulma turns back to look at the carnage that they have just dished out. And as Bulma looks back, Vegeta looks back at Bulma, realizing that this woman is dangerous. His look is one of not only fear, anger, confusion, but there's this killing intent like he's going to have to kill her so that way he doesn't have any weaknesses because this woman is his weakness. This woman is the one that he 
could very well change for and he's feeling something but he doesn't trust himself to know what that is. The Dragon Balls were not in Frieza's room and Vegeta senses that the two Earthling punks, Gohan and Krillin, are both on their way to the ship. So the Dragon Balls are around here somewhere, but maybe he shouldn't have killed every single guard and asked them some questions before he slaughtered them because that is making this search so much harder and that is another point to Bulma who suggested this very thing last chapter. And as the awkward sounds fills the air, Vegeta finally makes it to the armory where they can get changed and they must do so quickly before Frieza or more of his henchmen arrive. We? Says Bulma sheepishly and Vegeta has had it up to here with Bulma's complaints. Vegeta has no more time for them, but Bulma is sticking to her guns. They need separate changing rooms, but Vegeta continues to undress. There are no other rooms in the armory, and they need to get their equipment on rapidly. And Vegeta even taunts Bulma a little bit that a little bit of flesh, a little bit of skin is making her fumble this much. He even feels pride in his body as he says, well, after you're recover from your shock, quickly change and suit up. So Vegeta thinks that she is in awe of the Saiyan Prince, but I think this is more of a privacy issue. And this is actually the exact same scene that we saw in the Namek Saga when Vegeta brought Gohan and Krillin onto the ship so they can change into new armor. So it's just that but switched around with Vegeta and Bulma instead of him with the other two. Bulma is a little flustered but she quickly lets go and decides, you know what, let's go ahead and get this over with. But before that, she is going to be the one pushing Vegeta over the edge as Bulma leans in and asks him why did you decide to pull a solo rebellion without any allies, which is essentially what Vegeta did in the Namek arc. He just kind of went off on his own. I guess he didn't have any other Saiyans left to join him in this rebellion, but I'm sure there are other races that would have loved to give it to Frieza, even though they would have been scared to join him. And Bulma finally has a desire to as Vegeta is left there speechless. Bulma picks up a rag and starts wiping the dirt and grime off of Vegeta's face and basically states the obvious that he really wants to and she really wants to as well but he won't do it. And then she throws the rag right in his face. The reason is, one reason only, he's too distracted. His thirst for revenge on Frieza and his injured pride to Goku. It's the reason he decided to go on this solo mission to begin with and it is killing him, it is exhausting him and essentially it is blinding him to everything else, specifically Bulma. Bulma absolutely at this point has a thing for Vegeta and he has one to her too, but he won't do anything for her or with her because of the fact that he is wrapped up in his own feuds. And Vegeta asks, what is it that you suggest to get over all these obsessions? But Bulma knows there is nothing that can happen between them that is going to erase everything that he's striving for because he's still so uptight and he has a mission. And as we get the best version of Bulma that I could possibly think of, which is a fusion of Namek Bulma and Saiyan Armor Bulma, she says that he just needs a break, that's all. He needs to relax and take a breather. And it seems that Vegeta kind of just spent this entire time watching Bulma get dressed because she's surprised he's not dressed yet. And of course, it's because Bulma was seducing him, essentially. And Bulma thinks it's funny that, you know, he's calling her a seductress. And Vegeta kind of says the obvious that she really is crazy. And Bulma affirms that, yep, you have no idea. But just at that moment, Vegeta realizes that the other two are almost here. And so we get Spunky Bulma back saying, I guess it's time for her to resume her role as the damsel in this stress, essentially the hostage that Vegeta took away from Goku. But Vegeta simply just saying follow me gets Bulma to just kind of follow him, so doesn't really seem like she's putting up much of a fight. If she really wanted to, she could run away, but I don't think that she wants to do that, like, at all. 
Bulma's a little puzzled that Vegeta's actually going to wish for eternal life, and Vegeta says that is the only way to defeat Frieza, which honestly would have been a really cool story arc to see if Vegeta actually got that at some point. I always wondered, what if he wished for eternal life? How would he be? What would he be like? It is a really interesting question, and exactly which way his progression would have gone through Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super with eternal life would have been interesting as well. Could he self-destruct and just come back to life? or be alive after a self-destruction? I don't know. Vegeta hits the nail right on the head saying that I guess you guys only came here to revive the earthlings that he defeated. Yup, and my ex-boyfriend, which leads to an awkward pause to Bulma saying it's a complicated story, which it kind of is, but at least she said X, so that's all Vegeta needed to hear. Of course, Vegeta would say that's a waste of a wish. Not only wishing back weaklings doesn't make any sense to him, but wishing back her ex also does not make any sense to him. At least now it doesn't. And as he opens a door, Bulma thinks that she's getting a brand new shiny jail cell, but realizes that that's not where Vegeta took her at all. Surprise, Bulma yells, it's the engine room, and she begins to glow again, shocked that Vegeta brought her to the marvel that is the center of this spaceship. Remember, Bulma is a scientist, and that's something that I really like about this interpretation of her, that she reminds me a lot of that My Hero Academia chick, the one that makes gadgets for all the heroes, like she's so excited about her work. That's exactly what she reminds me of. And Bulma has just a thing to get all the information she needs from this ship. A portable computer desk with a lab attached, she brought everything essentially. And as Vegeta calls her mad scientist, she's just going to connect her computer to this machine, get all the data that she needs, and that way she gets the tech and all the schematics, and she can possibly do the same thing or do these types of spaceships on Earth. So she alone could reverse engineer these things and actually advance the human race well beyond their years, and it just shows how much of a important character Bulma actually is. Bulma starts setting up her lab and she opens the door and Vegeta catches a glimpse of a romance novel and then Bulma gets his attention and thanks him for bringing her here. Remember, she is his captive and she was super excited to see the spaceship so he knew she would love to see all this sort of stuff. So Vegeta is putting her needs and everything about her and her excitement in front of his cause which is getting the Dragon Balls and making sure they're out of dodge before Frieza gets there. And as Bulma is ready to start reverse engineering Frieza's ship, she asked Vegeta to see if he wants to help her, but Vegeta is missing. So she has to do it solo, and as she's going through the compartments, she starts talking about how Vegeta is really sad, and he is a guy that just wants to punch his pain away. And ultimately, that's his issue. He needs to get over that, get past that, and move on. But as she's thinking this, the ship begins to shake and begins to rumble. She finds a compartment she's looking for, opens it up, and sees something that she did not expect to see on Frieza's ship. And boom, outside, Vegeta is taking care of Jace quite handily. Now, Vegeta versus Jace is one of my favorite moments in the Namek arc because Vegeta found a member of the Ginyu Force that he could single-handedly take out and the attacks and abilities and just the whole Jason Voorhees presence that he had on the ship when he was tracking down Jace was one of my favorite moments but in this he's basically taking his anger and frustration his uptightness on poor Jace as he's thinking about Bulma who is again getting under his skin telling him that he's shaking and he says no no, he's not. She calls him boring, and as he blasts Jace to smithereens, he says, I'm not boring. At this point, Ginyu has already taken Goku's body, so we have gone a little bit forward here in the Namek Saga, but he's surprised that Vegeta has just killed Jace right in front of him, and Vegeta punches Ginyu Goku right in the gut, saying, I'm not boring. And unfortunately for Goku's body, Vegeta completely decimates him, punching him, beating him, kicking him, slamming him into the ground as he continues to think about Bulma. It gets crazy and savage to the point that Goku is yelling at Vegeta, don't kill him because that is his body. He's going to be stuck in Ginyu's body if that happens. And as Vegeta comes down trying to execute Ginyu and kill him with the final blow, 
yeah, it's time to change, and this is exactly what happened in the actual anime. Ginyu uses his technique to try to switch bodies with Vegeta. And just what Bulma said came to fruition. She says, you're too distracted, and he absolutely was in this fight. Too distracted thinking about Bulma, not about the fight, and that's why he was about to lose his body until Goku ends up jumping in the way, so that way he can go back to his original body. Ginyu is back, but he still has the ability to switch bodies, and even even though he's wounded, he can still try to take Vegeta, so as he begins to power up, his legs get shot up right under him to everybody's shock. Right through the main ship window, Bulma is standing right there with an alien rifle and she winks at Vegeta. Bulma did not expect earlier to find hidden alien weaponry. I think mainly because she didn't think that Frieza's army needed like guns, standard issue guns like this. They have the arm guns that most of them use, so it probably was a shock. Also, a lot of them can use key blasts, so there probably isn't much use for this, but if there is some use for this and it is hidden away, I guarantee you it is a very strong gun. And so she shoots a flash grenade right in front of Ginyu, who begins to try to change his body again. And this time it works out just like the anime, Goku picks up the frog and throws it. Leading to the body change that we all know and love, Ginyu Frog. And now that Ginyu is a frog, everyone kind of seems a little shocked as to what just happened and they look over to see Bulma giving them the victory thumbs up and even Krillin says she's going to brag about this for a long time. Bulma absolutely is a monster in this manga. It's almost like she's like night and day with her counterpart in the anime where she's much more of a damsel in distress and this one she isn't really afraid of much she's much more of an active player and she even shot Ginyu a high level Dragon Ball character at the time with a assault rifle just to get him to stop trying to change and transform so yes I love this version of Bulma she is absolutely capable of taking care of herself on this planet and I absolutely love it and as Ginyu hops away it's going to take at least an hour for Goku to heal, but that's way too long because Frieza could be there by then. And even Bulma says as she's been going through all the databases, there is another tank out there that they could use, but Vegeta says there was, but he destroyed it when Zarbon tried to keep him prisoner there. So they're going to have to wait for him to heal and heal fast, hopefully. And that's when Vegeta thinks about the Super Saiyan legend out loud, leading to Bulma asking what's going on, and he says it's complicated. The same exact thing she said when he asked about Yamcha. Krillin states the obvious and says that he's surprised that Vegeta is helping them and that he's essentially taking care of Bulma. And Bulma says, well, Sun asked him to help and take care of her so that way she would be safe. If you guys remember, that's not what happened at all and Bulma essentially just lied to her own friends for Vegeta, the villain of this story, or one of the villains of this story. So why did Bulma do this? Why is she lying for Vegeta? It is quite simple. Bulma reciprocates her feelings for Vegeta as well, and I think that she has fallen in love with him. As this little white lie has shown us, even Vegeta is looking at her like, what are you talking about, woman? So right now, the story has built up their relationship in an organic and normal way, and it doesn't feel rushed. It doesn't feel like they're just there. It feels like there has been a lot of tension with these two, and now they're at a place where Bulma would even lie to her own friends about what Vegeta did, which is essentially kidnap her. But Bulma wants him to be part of the crew, so she lied for him, and I definitely like the way this chapter is starting out. Krillin looks around in awe of the technology in Frieza's ship. This is an alien spaceship, so he should be in awe. I mean, we kind of just glance over the fact that this is an alien high-tech spaceship in the anime and the manga. I like that they're taking the time to have the Earthling's mind being blown as to what is possible in this spaceship. But as Vegeta is getting armor for the other two, Krillin looks on the ground and sees and finally realizes, notices that Bulma's original clothing is on the ground and Bulma is wearing just her jacket but with Saiyan armor as well so she had to have gotten undressed in this room as well as Vegeta. 
So the big mystery of the last chapter is why was there like a normal looking alien rifle inside Frieza's ship and Bulma asked Vegeta that same thing and that is something that was part of a game that Frieza played with the weaklings in his army and essentially what would happen is that he would hide random weapons around the ship and the ones that were smart enough crafty enough to find the weapons stayed in the army. But if you did not find these weapons, if you did not care enough or search adequately, then Frieza would execute you. And that's just a reminder to the other two as to who they're actually facing, who they're fighting against. But it also shows that Bulma is crafty enough to be in Frieza's army because she was the one that found the rifle. Now that the whole squad is all geared up, Krillin decides that it is time to go and find the password to call the dragon. So he's gonna go to Guru's place and hopefully Frieza's not there. In the anime, he was there and he does fight Nail, but then Nail kinda holds him still for a while and keeps him busy to buy everyone time. So he's going to find the password and Bulma wishes him luck but before Krillin leaves he wants to ask Bulma something but then decides that no he's just crazy his mind is playing tricks on him and he doesn't think that there's anything going on between these two and it kind of looks like they're together like as they're standing side by side and even Krillin probably feels like a tension between them he probably feels something something happened something was going on there's something there and Krillin even senses it but you know what he's just has his mind in the clouds he's thinking crazy thoughts because Vegeta killed her ex-boyfriend like why would she fall in love with him why would there be anything between these two so Bulma decides to go off into the ship and look for more technology look for more research and you can see here that she's got the rifle slung on her back and it looks like an AK-47 like a space AK-47 looks pretty dope and Gohan asks Vegeta to help him look for the Dragon Balls and Vegeta just kind of turns around and follows Bulma and even Gohan feels like there's something weird going on but he's like you know what adults are probably just weird and this is the issue with what's going on with Vegeta's mentality right now because he is in this panel shows that he is extremely 100% distracted by Bulma he just followed her out of the room I remember feeling this feeling towards Rose that I was kind of like a puppy dog following her when we first started dating because I was that infatuated and it looks like Vegeta has the same thing for Bulma so again very good writing very good storytelling in this showing that Vegeta is losing sight of everything else and wants Bulma for himself. Bulma's ready to put this hour to good use while Goku heals and learn more about the ship but Vegeta needs to talk to her about the fact that she lied about their situation and Bulma says it's just a little white lie let's all get along in this situation she knows that they stand a better chance together than apart and Vegeta gives a very weak laugh and then falls backward and passes out. Remember at this point in the anime Vegeta does fall asleep in the ship waiting for Goku to regenerate and that is when Gohan and Krillin are able to sneak off with the Dragon Balls. I always thought that was kind of strange like you never see Vegeta falling asleep at the wheel at any other point in Dragon Ball Z and so it was kind of out of character for him just to like go to sleep and not really pay attention to everything else that was going on. It was definitely something that Akira Toriyama used to move the plot along so Gohan and Krillin will take the Dragon Balls away. In this aspect it's a lot more believable. He's exhausted. He followed Bulma out of the other room so Bulma was the actual distraction but he passes out because he is tired so I definitely like the way that this did it a lot better than the master Akira Toriyama. As Vegeta sleeps, Bulma crouches down and just kind of stares at him for a little bit, almost reaching out, trying to touch him, but pulls away again because she knows there's something there, but she's not ready to have it out in the open just yet. Which I also very much like that this isn't just a one-sided thing from Vegeta to Bulma. Bulma also has a tremendous attraction to Vegeta. As Vegeta sleeps, Bulma is messing around with the ship, getting all sorts of technology that could push the story forward if 
this story continues past Namek where Bulma takes all this technology back to Earth and Vegeta wakes up finding a blanket on him but also finding error alarms everywhere. Bulma probably really went deep diving into the ship but he realizes that everything is pitch black. Why is it so dark in here? He runs out asking what that noise is, why is it so dark, and sees Bulma grabbing her and asking her what's going on. And it looks like Bulma has been kind of fumbling in the dark, not knowing exactly what the hell is going on as well, but realizes that it's the sky that turned dark, not the ship. Vegeta looks out the window and sees that not only is the sky dark, but there is a huge monster outside. And this is all weird because there are multiple suns on the planet and he's never seen the dragon being summoned. So he has no idea what this is until he realizes that no, this can't be. It is the dragon and Bulma in the back, I think she realizes that Krillin must have been the one to summon the dragon behind Vegeta's back and she even looks a little bit like she's guilty because she was with the earthling she came with the earthlings and of course that is when Vegeta starts blaming her for this that she distracted him it's her fault Bulma reassures him that all she's been doing is trying to save everybody she rescued him she rescued him twice actually and then rescued her friends so it's not actually her fault and he can throw a huge temper tantrum if he wants but there is no way that she is going to take the blame on this one Vegeta doesn't have time for this and that is when he realizes something that Bulma who is not a key user cannot and that is that Frieza is almost here and as Parunga looks down on Gohan, Krillin and Dende, Dende yells back to ask your wishes before Frieza comes. Obviously they can all feel Frieza coming over the horizon and as this is going on Vegeta grabs Bulma and carries her away running down the halls looking frantically for something. Bulma yells frantically behind her yelling at Vegeta saying that she needs to help Goku she needs to fix his tank because if she doesn't he will not be fully healed but Vegeta says forget about Kakarot because he is looking for something far more valuable. And as Vegeta kicks open walls looking for whatever he's looking for he yells at Bulma that for the sake of the weaklings that betrayed him one of the wishes that they're making better be his. He needs to run out the clock to get Bulma somewhere and at the same time get back to make his wish. And as Dende wishes Piccolo back to life, the events of the original timeline seem to be going smoothly. Honestly, I do like this wish a lot because it brings back the original Dragon Balls from Earth. But at the same time, I think that bringing Piccolo to the planet is a little bit of a wasted wish. Even though he does go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Frieza for a time, it only buys them enough time to get Goku into the mix and Piccolo in my opinion doesn't really make a difference after that. On King Kai's planet Piccolo is finally revived as his halo disappears and we get a glimpse of Bulma as she looks frantically at what Vegeta was looking for and that is Frieza's own personal pod. Kami returns back to life and Purunga tells them that their first wish has been granted. Now state your second wish. Bulma finally realizes what Vegeta has been doing this entire time and she yells that she is not leaving. Obviously she does not have the strength to fight off Vegeta. Vegeta is trying to save Bulma and get her away from the situation as far as possible, as far as she can go because he knows that she can't do anything more here. She can't fight off Frieza. There's nothing that she can do to help. She'll just get in the way. And Bulma tries to pardon her friends saying that they're just desperate. That's why they stole the Dragon Balls away from Vegeta and that if they work together, they can defeat Frieza. And just because she's not powerful like Vegeta doesn't make her useless. Bulma is breaking down at this point crying because leaving leaves her friends behind and leaves Vegeta behind in the hands of a monster like Frieza and there is no guarantee that any of them can defeat him really honestly nobody knew at this point that Super Saiyan was officially going to be a thing. Vegeta gets her attention by saying woman lend me some of that strength and he grabs her pulls Bulma in for a kiss to her original surprise but she ends up kissing him back. The kiss that has been built up throughout this entire 
entire manga thus far is finally happening. Their love on planet Namek, of course. Vegeta made the first move, but it's not something that Bulma hasn't been thinking about since the very beginning. It's a very tender moment between the two because Vegeta knows he's saying goodbye. And the fact that Vegeta ends up really dying at the end of this whole thing and then coming back after, but we didn't know that part at that point, but yeah, he ends up dying on planet Namek. This moment is a lot more sad when you reflect on that. And the kiss was a sufficient enough distraction as he throws Bulma back in the pod closing it as she bangs against the door. Vegeta smashes through the hole in the ship, making it larger, flying straight toward Krillin and Gohan. As Krillin yells back, Vegeta is coming, and they ask for Piccolo to be brought to Planet Namek. The pod begins to levitate, obviously it's getting out of dodge, and Bulma keeps banging on the control panel, trying to break out of her imprisonment. But Bulma has definitely gotten to the Saiyan Prince as he is trying to focus on his goals and he can't because all he's thinking about is Bulma. But Vegeta's looking out for Bulma doesn't go anywhere as she accidentally opens up the pod, throwing her out of it, and now she is back in harm's way. Vegeta continues to fly toward the dragon because he needs to get to the brats to stop them before they use up all their wishes as Purunga easily wishes Piccolo to plan in Namek. They don't see Piccolo anywhere around so they start yelling, same thing as the anime and Dende's like wait you wanted to bring him here to this spot because he would have needed to be extremely specific to the dragon and he was not. Boma flings on the floor obviously because of the fact that she just kind of tumbled out of the pod and she is still going to be a major player in the story but as she rolls Vegeta finally lands on ground zero where Purunga is at. Similar to the anime there is one wish left Will Vegeta get eternal life in this version of the story? Vegeta is big mad because he comes up on Krillin, grabbing him by his armor, and he knows that Krillin is the culprit behind stealing the Dragon Balls and trying to take all the wishes for themselves. Vegeta gripping up on Krillin yells at him, telling him that the woman wanted him to be merciful to them for this betrayal, but he is at the end of his patience, and I think Krillin finally realized that that betraying Vegeta while Vegeta was alone with Bulma is not probably the smartest thing that he done because Vegeta can take out all his anger, all his frustration on Bulma and so Krillin realizes that he actually betrayed not only Vegeta but Bulma as well. And Vegeta takes this as leverage, telling Krillin that, oh, now you think about Bulma. Well, you weren't thinking about her when you were stealing the Dragon Balls, insinuating that he has done something horrifying to the Earthling female. And he doesn't sugarcoat it. He says that Krillin is out of reach to save her, but Gohan thinks back on the way that Vegeta and Bulma were acting on the ship and how Bulma seemed to have Vegeta on a leash. And Gohan was also peeking in on them when Vegeta fell asleep and Bulma was looking at him with love in her eyes. And Gohan at the time thought, again, adults are very weird, but he realizes now that Vegeta is lying. He's trying to get a rise out of Krillin because they stole the Dragon Balls. Gohan plays along and tells Krillin that they're going to use their Dragon Balls to get Bulma back and they have one more wish left that they can give to Vegeta essentially and Krillin, Krillin is not up for that plan but it works out the exact same way as it did in the anime and Vegeta throws him aside and picks up Little Green and forces him to do this wish. And now that Krillin's thought a little bit more about it, it is the best plan that they have because they can take Freeze on alone. There is no guarantee that Piccolo is going to take Freeze on on his own. And so there is one more wish left and might as well let Vegeta have it. Vegeta is finally going to get what he wants. He is happy, but at the same time, he knows that if he had told them the truth that he tried to save Bulma, they wouldn't have believed it. But it's a good thing that Bulma is far away from here. Unfortunately for this situation to have worked, Bulma would have had to stay in the pod and left with the pod when it was leaving. But Bulma ended up hitting all the buttons, flying out of the pod, and fucking herself up a lot more than she probably would have had if Vegeta hadn't have thrown her in there. 
and now she's running through Frieza's ship. Bulma legit messed herself up big time and she even is bleeding from her head. That's how hard she hit herself when she flew out of the ship and we see that Piccolo has finally made it to Namek and he sees the dragon before him. So again, every piece is aligning the same way that it did in the anime minus the relationship between Bulma and Vegeta. We even have Piccolo getting stopped by Nail because Nail is about to give Piccolo the last bit of his energy and his key. That way Piccolo can become strong enough to be a threat to Frieza. And all this is happening at the same time. Nail offering the key to Piccolo, Vegeta realizing that they are too late, and Bulma running through the ship, falling and struggling to get back to her feet as Vegeta realizes that Frieza has finally made it to ground zero. He is hovering behind them and he is pissed. Frieza congratulates Vegeta, well done, I couldn't have done it without you. But unfortunately, it is time for Frieza to take out the trash. And Bulma struggles to crawl toward what looks like a mechanic's kit with binoculars. I see a screwdriver there, not exactly sure what her endgame is, how she is going to help in this situation. Is she going to be more of a distraction for Frieza? Or as a lot of people were saying in the comment section in the last video, is she going to be the catalyst for Vegeta to transform into a Super Saiyan before Goku? I don't know exactly which direction they're gonna go, but it looks like they are out of time because Frieza points his finger right at all three of them and he is ready to end their existence if they don't give him what he wants. Vegeta has come too far and lost too much to give up now and he flies toward Frieza before Frieza could use his finger to threaten them, grabbing his hand and pushing it back. And even Frieza is shocked at what is happening, how Earth has made Vegeta delusional that he can defeat Frieza, but Vegeta isn't the same guy that Frieza remembers and this shows on the scouter as his power rises to meet that first form Frieza, breaking the scouter, stalling Frieza enough for Vegeta to yell to make the wish, make Vegeta immortal so Vegeta can have a real shot at killing the tyrant. As Nail begins to fuse with Piccolo, giving him the energy that he needs to defeat Frieza, the dragon's eyes go black and it looks like time is up. Little Green realizes that the Grand Elder Guru is gone. And as the fusion starts to take place, the dragon begins to disintegrate because the Grand Elder has passed away and the Dragon Balls are useless. It is the same exact scenario that happened in the anime, but in this one, the catalyst is the fact that instead of Vegeta flying straight to ground zero to try to get that wish for himself he spent all that time trying to save Bulma essentially giving up his wish and Bulma essentially stealing it because instead of Vegeta having his full undivided attention on the wish he had his full undivided attention on Bulma even declaring his feelings for her with a kiss and now we are at the point where Vegeta is about to verse Frieza with Piccolo coming in hot and Bulma having some sort of plan to either get Goku out of this pod maybe sooner or maybe another plan where she is full distraction against Frieza. Subscribe for more content.